year ago at CES, we announced the Tegra K1. The Tegra K1 was important for several reasons. First, of course, it is the highest performance mobile chip. However, it is also the world's first mobile processor that unifies the architecture of a desktop powerful GeForce GPU and the most modern GPU without a mobile chip. It brought to mobile devices the ability to do things that, quite frankly, was hard to imagine. It took us almost two years to bring Kepler to TK1. Four months ago, we announced the Maxwell GPU. It is the world's most advanced GPU. The reception has been incredible. It is twice <coughs> performance per unit everything compared to Kepler. Twice the performance per unit area, twice the performance per unit energy, and it also introduced brand new graphics technologies such as VXGI, which is a voxel-based illumination technology, as well as the world's first fully compatible DX12, a new API that hasn't even been announced and won't come out until Windows 10. Maxwell is unquestionably the most advanced GPU we have ever built. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're announcing that the exact same Maxwell GPU, the exact same Maxwell GPU, will come to mobile devices in a processor we call Tegra X1. Tegra X1 is a mobile super chip. The world's first mobile chip that can perform 4K 60Hz 10-bit video in both H.265 and VP9. Nothing like it in the world. The world's first mobile super chip, Tegra X1. Tegra X1 is called Tegra X1 because of the Maxwell. Tegra X1. The performance is really quite amazing. The Apple A8X, which just came out a year later. And when you compare that to TX1, Tegra X1, we're going to set the bar again. And just the power envelope of a TX1, which is about 10 watts, we're going to show you the state of the art unreligion for running elements. Guys, let's roll. CX is, let me show it to you. This is the 
drive CX. This is the most advanced digital cockpit computer in the world. You guys see that? Okay, so before we demonstrate it to you, let's show it to you. This is driven by Drive CX, the infotainment system, and the digital cockpit, the digital virtual cockpit, completely unified into one computer. It could be one operating system driving both. It could be two operating systems driving one driving each one of them. It's your choice. Any operating system is supported that I mentioned. And so why don't we uh, introduce, come on up, Justin. So, so one of the things that Justin said that's really important is that, that um, uh, what you're looking at, the runtime, is a rendering engine. Just as there's a runtime for games we call Unreal Engine, there's a runtime here for your digital cockpit. And that runtime is called Studio. The runtime has all kinds of advanced rendering technologies, whether it's dynamic lighting, high dynamic range, or to show you some amazing technology related to material rendering. All of that technology is shrink wrapped into a way so that designers who are good at designing cars don't have to understand computer graphics technology and still access all of the amazing horsepower that's underneath. All of that is encapsulated into this design suite of software we call Design Studio. Now, Justin, uh, developed, Justin and his team develops the tools, but they also advise and work with our partners. Again, we've got uh, uh, media integration allows you to control the volume and play from FM or play from your uh, uh, local music here. But we can also, for example, uh, decide to split the screen and place navigation on top and have media playing in the bottom. So you have full control over where you'd like to place various information. Of course, as displays get larger and they you know, drive more and more pixels, you're going to want to be able to control the entire... Now, this navigation system is completely done in 3D, right? And one of the things that's really cool about it most, most uh, maps that we see is so congested with so much information um, that it, it distracts uh, from, from uh, the actual navigation itself. And so what we're, what we're actually doing here, what Justin has here, is a complete 3D geometry environment. However, the space right around the car is lit dynamically. That's right. We have, for many people who, don't, who uh, know about this technology, not only is it lit dynamically, but there's there's ambient occlusion, there's global illumination, so that what looks like a Tron experience uh, is realized here. Yeah. One of the other things we can do is, in this specific case, we're, gonna do, we're doing vehicle detection. And so we can actually subclass vehicles down. So you can make different driving decisions based on the class of vehicle that you have. So in this case, we're classifying the vehicle, so you can see there's two SUVs in front of us. The bar on the bottom represents the confidence level. This is how strong the neural network believes that what it's saying is the distance comes. So it's driving by the wind. So you see that we have a passenger car tacked there on, on the left. An interesting thing happens as we close the one's intersection. So we begin to get a, a strong number of detections. And we still have two SUVs that we tracked in front of us. We've now picked up a heavy truck on our right. It's actually one of these advertisement trucks you guys see drive around here. Uh, an SUV. On the other side, we have a truck and a van. So a few frames ago, probably by too quick, but uh, you guys can see it with the hands on. It actually classified that hotel transport van as a heavy truck because it had just this base initial view. But as we close in on the object and we get more views, the neural network gains more information. It's easier to better classify the object. 